Let me begin this morning by giving all of you a little bit of advice. So if it's in the middle of the week and your phone rings and you see on the call display Tim's name on it, be careful about picking up that phone. You could very well find yourself speaking at the next church service. And, and to an empty room, no less. You see, I can tell you there are a lot of people like me that make a living or partial living out of professional speaking, speaking in front of large audiences. And we have these nightmares every once in a while, like arriving late or getting lost or arriving at the front without our notes. But one of the worst is arriving at the front and having no one in the audience. It's a killer. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Barrett. I'm a member of First Presbyterian Church here in Collingwood. My family as well. My wife, Karen, four children, five grandchildren. I have to stop for a moment and let you know that I rehearsed the beginning of this a couple of times. My wife finally came to me just this morning and said, could you tell me, David, where the sixth grandchild is? Maybe you want to fix it. There was a little typo in this presentation. So it is five, not six. We were skiers originally that brought us to this region, and now we are now full-time residents of Collingwood, and we moved up about two years ago. I am a professional speaker, education, education consultant with the Shield School of Business, the executive education side, and I work in the area of project management and strategic planning. So over the past six or so years of my life, I have made a living or a partial living of producing content around strategy and the strategic planning part of the business world out there. I've talked to a number of different organizations and conferences around North America and spent a lot of time on airplanes and at the airport getting from here to there. And then all of this hit. My career took a major right-hand turn immediately in March. All my games were canceled from March on. The industry basically came to a close for professional speakers and anyone in this space. So I was faced with rethinking my career really quickly. What was I going to do? I wasn't ready to kind of stop yet. But what was I going to do with the next five, maybe eight years of my professional life? And I know I'm not alone in this. And it's this rethinking part of this life of mine and many of yours that I want to address this morning. You see, in my mind, if we just sit back and pray and maybe just wait for that phone to ring or cross our fingers or dream, whatever we want out of the future, whatever we want to fix or wherever we want to be, it probably is not going to happen. In my mind, we really do need a plan. We need to rethink the next few years of our lives. But more than that, in the next steps, we need to start putting a plan together. Proverbs 16, 9. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Yes, God does have a plan for us, and I truly believe that, and I've always believed that. But we need to drive the plan as well. We need to be involved. We need to explore before the plan is set in place. We, we need to control our own destiny. I think, honestly, I think that God wants us to have a plan. So I want to talk to you today about planning. And here comes the educational part. In my life, we call it a strategic plan. Why? Well, there are two fundamental reasons. Number one is if you really want something in life, if you have a vision or if you have a goal, if you have some place you want to be or do or be with, you need to plan it out. You need to put some structure into that plan. Secondly, and probably more common today, is if life has struck a blow, if things just aren't going well, if all of a sudden your career needs to take a major right-hand turn. We need to find our way out. And a great way to do that is to have a plan. I like to say, taking the wing in out of, our, out of our lives, out of our careers, out of our organizational futures, 
So let's talk a bit about strategic planning. And I do workshops on this and, and just definition and then how to, and then we'll get on with this. So what is strategic planning? Well, it's a guide, it's a roadmap. It's a roadmap, it, it, it's a roadmap from here to there. But if I'm here today, I want to be there tomorrow, how am I going to get there? It's, it's art and it's science of thinking through the potential, understanding where we're at, and then putting the pieces in place. It's strategic thinking about a pin in the map at a future state, and then getting ourselves there. The process is quite easy. I mean, there are lots of organizations that offer strategic planning courses, there are workshops, there are courses in the university that offer it. I'm going to take it down to three little chunks. Strategic planning has three basic steps. Now, the obvious one is the future. We call it the future state, we call it the vision, but it is somewhere out in the future. What's important in strategic thinking and strategic planning is that there is a pin in the map. Instead of just, I want to be, it's I want to be when. I want to be in three years in five years, in ten years. Many years ago, someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, you know what, I now figured you out, David. You're going to be a professional speaker when you grow up. He painted a picture to the future. I didn't believe him. It took me a few months to get my head around it. But eventually, I put the pin in the map, and I said, okay, with where I'm at today, 15 years from now, I'm going to do this and this and become a professional speaker for the last part of my career. Little did I know that March 2020 would happen. But there is a pin in the map. That one was 15 years away. That, that's all right. The future state and that and analysis of where we want to be, we, we go to that so quickly when we think strategically because it's fun, because it's interesting, and it's exciting. And how do we get there is the obvious second piece. Well, that's where I want to be. I'm going to take these courses. I'm going to meet these people. I'm going to do that and this and learn and experience. But I said there were three parts. And here comes the critical piece in any strategic thinking process. And it's called the current state. It's, it's that analysis of today, of the state of the union, of whatever you're dealing with. It could be you, it could be an organization, it could be a career. But this piece is absolutely critical to the strategic planning process. Because if you don't know where you're coming from, how are you going to figure out where you're going to or how are you going to put the pieces in place? If you don't know the good, the bad, and the ugly, the strengths and the weaknesses, the gaps in what you're dealing with today, then how will you know where you need to work in order to get here? Often we build strategic plans for the future without a really good understanding of what we're dealing with. And therefore, we miss the point sometimes, and we miss the piece, and sometimes it fails, and often it fails because we didn't think this out well enough. A couple of other things before we go. Strategic thinking and strategy is not set in stone. It can change. You can have a plan B. You can have a plan C. That's all right. You can dump the plan. You can get to late March and say, this isn't working. The world is coming to a totally different space in my area. I'm going to do a pivot. That's all right. Great leaders pivot fast and they pivot well. Individually, we're wise to think a little bit more, with a little bit more agility and be able to say, you know what? While I told everyone I was going to do that, it's not going to work anymore. I'm thinking of this or I'm going to rethink it out. And I'm here to say, that's all right. And the other piece I want to just quickly hit on is strategy is fine so long as you build it well and you revisit it on a regular basis. You measure how are we doing? What did we say we were going to do? And how are we doing against that process? What will it take now to get to the end result? Maybe things have changed and things do change. So just that revisit as we move along. We see strategy or strategic plans in three major areas. One, organizationally. Not-for-profits, for-profits, large, medium, small businesses, the great ones, the good ones. We think strategically. We create a strategic plan. This church, the town of Collingwood, Simcoe County, the hospital. The hospital will probably have three plans right now with a new building in sight. 
with the new development, but then with this COVID problem right now, and then probably the middle plan that was there all along. We also see strategy within our careers, our professional careers. Those of us that are still working, those of us that are retired, and we look back, and the young who will look forward to a career. The great people, we will be wise, and we were wise, to think strategically about our careers. Rather than just let the phone ring and have people transfer us to a new city, we put a plan together. We think to the future, five, 10, maybe even 20 years, and we say, this is the trajectory at this moment. Plan A. This is where we want to be. It puts us in control. As I said, it takes the wing out of it. And it's so nice to get that call to say, we've got a great offer right here, a great position in Vancouver. I love Vancouver. I'm not talking Vancouver. But to be able to say, you know what, can you give me a little time? Because I want to put it against the plan and see if it fits. And see if this is truly part and can work towards the long-term plan. I said there were three, and here's the third. And here's where I want to spend the last half of this presentation, of this talk. And that's within our own lives. Karen and I, right from day one, have had a life plan, our personal plan. It wasn't day one, it was day two. We, we, we were hit hard right at the beginning. Karen brought in two children that I never knew existed two years before. I was a I was a father. But guess what? I was a father without a job. I just put for a little business of mine down. Debt, expenses, very little income, credit card coming in. It was awful. And so right off the bat, we realized, and thankfully, I married someone that thinks like me, but we thought, you know, we've got to put a plan together. We've got to get this under control. So we started to think about all the parts of our lives that that we could control, and we start to prioritize, and we start to think about all the pieces of the puzzle, the good, the bad, and the ugly, that we need to address. And right from the beginning, this thought process, you know what, it gave us comfort. It gave us a, 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 an understanding of what we both wanted, and, and an agreement about what the future looked like. And then we were able to work together towards that future. And throughout our lives, and our marriage, 30 years now, we keep coming back to that plan in different pieces. And now we don't sit there and talk about the big picture all the time. We can't. But we slice up our lives into segments, and then we prioritize. And it could be the relationship of, with my son, Rob, who at the beginning, it was Rob. I didn't know what I was doing. Today, we're, we're best friends. It took a lot of work, and it took a lot of planning on how to turn that relationship around. Today, we think strategically about our friends and our relationships with our friends. We really do. So who are we going to play with? Who are we going to get over for a visit? Who are we going to get over to the deck with, uh, with separation today? Our support system, our grandchildren, all five of them. Our health, how are we going to stay fit? We think strategically about our living and where we were going to live. We knew that we were going to move to Collingwood about 25 years ago. It was always in the plan, and all the time as we moved and shuffled, we knew that that's where we were going to end up. Our activities, how we were going to have fun, we thought strategically about, I'd say about 15 years ago, okay, we're getting towards retirement to that time where we've got more time on our hands. What are we going to do? We did three things, in fact. We took up golf, not very good at it, but we're still trying, but we do love it. We took up road biking. And that lasted about three years, and we're not very happy on that anymore, so that's all right. And we took up bridge. That was a scary one, and we are still playing. It's really good. I'm still struggling, but we took up bridge. Strategically, we sat there and said, here we are. In 15 years, we're going to be there. How are we going to make that work? And we thought about our spiritual lives. When we get to Collingwood, what church will we join? Should we be exploring? Well, we've been visiting First Press for a while, and is that going to be our home? And then how will we be involved in the church? Strategically thinking about today, the future, and how we're going to get there. And how we are going to give back to the community once we got settled. And we actually put our minds to our special talents and where we get, and we talk to each other. I mean, we really did. And it sounds funny, but that's how it works for Karen and I. Karen got involved 
in Castle with our friend Sherry here at the church, and I'm involved in an organization called Magic Children in the Arts. So each one of these pieces we're able to pull out and say, is this important to us right now? Is there a problem or is there an opportunity? Because it could be both. Or we can start thinking strategically about how to deal with the future. Do we have the bandwidth? Do we have the time? What will it look like in the future? So we've done well through thick and thin. But there's no doubt in my mind that we could not have got to where we are today without two very important parts of our lives. Our faith and our plans. I really do believe that God wanted us to have a plan, wants us to have a plan, and that's part of the whole, the whole process. And that's kind of why I'm speaking to you today. That's kind of why I picked up the book when I saw his name. I'm like, oh, this will be interesting. These are really, really crazy times for all of us. Some of us are going through a lot of stress and a lot of hurt right now. A lot of angst, a lot of trepidation still. Some of us are looking at new opportunities. I am. Some of us are looking like it, it, it's just a new day and, and we're going to do things differently. And maybe you can think of your life now and think about where parts of your life where you can start thinking a little bit more strategically and start putting a plan together. We understand maybe next fall the kids are still going to be out. How's that going to work? Rather than just go in and win it. What does retirement look like? How about your travel plans? <laughs> it's going to change. Maybe it's a new business, a new part of your business. Maybe it's a new concerted effort about relationships or a relationship in your life. So whatever you want to do, if you can think towards that future state and you can think about where you are today, I promise you, in my experience, it will be easier for many of us listening today because we've got God on our side, we have our faith, and hopefully we have a plan. I want to end with a fun story. You see, a number of years ago, about 15 or so, Karen and I took a slice of that, that philanthropic piece, that giving back piece, and started talking about what we could do. We were in a really good spot right then. Our kids were a perfect age for us to get out there and do something different. I remember the conversation here and saying, you know, I have a calling. I can feel it. It's, it's towards the church. It's part of my, my faith, life. It has something to do with babies, young moms. She actually became a, a mentor mom at the church in Mississauga, Trinity Anglican. And we thought, you found it. Wonderful. And so we had dealt with that slice. But then things changed. Because one day she came home and she said, you know what, maybe I was wrong. We just met a young couple, she said, and they were dealing with an organization called Jewels for Jesus. And Jewels for Jesus is an adoption agency in Mississauga that every once in a while has a need for foster parents for newborn babies. A couple that could go walk into the hospital and pick up a newborn, one day old, and shelter them, either for a few days because there's a big work deal, or for maybe longer, and about seven weeks, for young ones that were born as a surprise and needed to be protected and looked after while the process of adoption went on. So, we got organized, we put the plan together, got approved through the, through the, uh, the authorities and the police checks and the hot water checks and all the surprise checks to our house the discussions with our children, and we became foster parents. One day, I was actually out of town, the phone rang, it was Jules for Jesus. We had your first baby. This is our first baby, and her name was Mercy. We picked up Mercy, actually at the adoption agency, and there were, this is a much longer story, but you're not going to get it today, because I don't have time. But Mercy came into our lives and she completely changed our lives. Here's another picture of, this is the family photo. Two of our children missing at the time. This was a really, really special time for us. And it was a time where we actually, and I go back to the plan, we saw it come together. And we knew that we wanted to give back and we knew that Karen had the talents and the ability and the heart to apply to people like Mercy. So we actually had her for seven weeks. 
the end of the seven weeks, we gave her away, and that was, that was really tough, emotionally and physically. Uh, but uh, we did have time to rest after that. It was, so we got through it in a couple of weeks, and guess what happened? The phone rang again. And we had, after that, a series over three years of 13 young ones, little babies, in our home. Here's a, here's a gathering of some of them. Not all of them. I couldn't fit them all into one slide. It was a journey that we will never forget, that my children will never forget, that some of our friends will always remember. And it was part of our plan. By the way, we are still in touch with our little Mercy. Her name is Alicia Mercy. They gave Mercy as her middle name. And we always hear from Paul and Pearl, the parents, and we've been watching her grow up to be a fine young woman. So here's the point. Strategic planning isn't just for the tough times. It can make your dreams come true. It can cause and help your prayers to be answered. I'm here today to encourage you to look ahead in any part of your life and think strategically. Think about the future state. Put some structure into it, develop a plan, and start making that plan come true. Strategic planning and strategic thinking, together with the tools that God has given us, can absolutely help us in the tough times and reward us in the good times.